What's up guys? Today we're going to do some heavy bench press with 30 pounds of chains. What's up guys? Hope you're enjoying these workout videos. You know I'm trying to get that 4 or 5 benches here and this is the journey. So I hope that it motivates and inspires you to keep pushing your limitations. Anyway, this segment is a little bit different because it combines high intensity and high volume into one by mixing in a variety of different sets of reps. In a way, I would actually call it a volume workout. So far, I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm gonna start off with three plates and take it from there. I don't know how much more I can handle because with chain pressing, you kind of find your limits pretty quickly. What makes it different is the fact that I start off with a heavy single. But everything beyond that point, you will clearly see that's not my typical segment. And this is pretty much what I've been doing to raise my performance. My volume day starts off with heavy singles. Very nice. This grouped a little bit, but happy with that rep. Okay, we're gonna hit one more training max. I'm thinking of going for 345. So I'm definitely gonna explain this more, but for now, check out this lift. but at what cost? Those grindy repetitions that you see me do in the past, which I'm not about to do on a consistent basis because it does impact your recovery in a significant way. Let's keep this momentum going. Gotta say that went much better than expected, especially since I did the winning warmup right beforehand. I've been experimenting with this strategy because I'm trying to maximize my longevity and Matt Wenning is someone that I greatly respect when talking about the conjugate system or just inspiration for optimal programming. If you check out the interview I did with him, he describes what this setup is. In my case, I did four sets of 25 on push-ups, band rows, and extensions, but it wasn't in that order. And I thought I was gonna feel that much weaker, but I didn't. I felt warmed up, ready to hit some heavy weights, and any aches and pains that you might have due to training really hard tends to go away for the most part. It really primes you for heavy lifting, which is absolutely fantastic. And I feel like I needed that because I've been really training hard. And with the chain stuff, you are overloading. So the more warmed up you get, the better off you're gonna be. So I think I'm gonna continue with this strategy. You can also say it's a way of getting more or less weight or just potentiation, which I'm really liking. So you may notice beyond that point that these are 30 pounds of chains. That's right, they finally arrived, which I'm so excited about. Good luck. What can I say guys? 10 on 10, more than I expected for today's session in terms of how everything felt and the numbers I put up. So really, really happy. Let's keep moving forward and feel better press now. So mentioned one great, now it's time to hit some always with the Swiss bar. This minimizes overuse in the shoulders and is a lot more challenging. I find chains are one of the best tools for raising your performance. And what I can say is that the medial head of my triceps is getting thicker. I've had some guys comment that in my workout videos. You can see the separation right near the elbow. And I think that's been coming from all the overloads, all the accommodating resistance. Obviously muscle memory as well, but I'm training my triceps like there's no tomorrow. From the variations to the volume, everything is maxed out. And with the OHP, that is no exception either because it's a neutral grip which is absolutely psychotic. I don't know what it is about the Swiss bar, but I genuinely find it to be the most difficult bar for pressing. Whether it's flat bench, overhead press, doesn't matter. And in this case, we're doing a three sets of 15, which, as I discussed before, is more of a volume setup. I'm not doing my three by 10 with 135, no. Keeping the reps a bit higher, it's slightly easier on recovery. So what differs from my traditional setup is I'm maxing out first. Well, not really max out, it's, it's close, right? Three quality singles. Then I follow up with my traditional template, but the reps are high and the variations might be different. So my intensity workout, I might get a three sets of 10, but with heavier chains. And the OHP might also include them. In this case, I kept it raw. And for the chain work, it was on the lighter side. So if I do overload, it isn't to a tremendous extent. I try to get a little bit in, but at the same time, I'm being mindful of the fact that I do get a bit of a deloading effect out of the bottom. So in this way, I can press for much longer while preserving my joint integrity, which is absolutely fundamental in this game. So I hope that's not too confusing, but if you have any questions regarding my system, feel free to ask, man, and do know that there is an aesthetic 
power building hybrid program coming out, which pretty much implements all the strategies I've learned over the years. So it's my updated way of training for these particular goals, not necessarily yoke training or just the general stuff that I've talked about back then. Not that it's bad at all. I'm just training for different things right now. Different goals, guys. So this is the extension part. I really like the pausing at the bottom. I feel like I get an amazing stretch on my triceps and I fail sooner without having to go as heavy and my elbows generally feel better. I found that when I was going above 95 pounds or just sticking to the 10 rep range doing touch and go style, I was feeling a bit more achy the next day. And although I have hypermobile elbows and don't experience negative elbow pain, I don't want to get snapped up. And I do think that is a potential risk if I over abuse the extensions, though I do know they're essential for my needs as someone who has lagging arms and is torso dominant. But that's why I'm doing the higher reps. When you stick to the 15 to 20 zone and with the pausing, you don't have to go as heavy, but you feel like you're getting the same job done, if not more, because there's greater time and retention. Not that that's a super important variable or anything, but it is nice to have. And I certainly felt it on every possible level. So that was super nice. We're back, we're starting off with dumbbell rows. Use the heaviest weights you can handle. In my case, I'm maxing out the adjustable dumbbell. After that, I'm gonna smash some penle rows for higher volume. So all we're doing is correcting weaknesses over here. Anyway, this is the back and bicep portion of the workout. Decided to mix it up. Didn't wanna go heavy on the pull-ups. I felt like I've been really going ham on them. And because it's been over a month of actually maxing out probably twice a week on pull-ups or at least doing heavy singles. I was like, okay, let's give my body a little bit of a break. So this is like a mini deload, you could say, which I also plan on doing every four weeks because this is what Matt Wenning recommends. You deload one of the segments and I decided to deload on the pull-ups, not the bench press. So nothing wrong with that. Rows are fantastic. Easier on your recovery when you do it with the dumbbell row. Uh, since the lower back is not being stressed in any type of way and you're maximizing the way to stretch I actually think it's one of the best movements of all time for this specifically deep range of motion Pretty strict form nothing Like it's not textbook obviously, but it's not those super cheap reps that you see me do in the past And I would also say that with the olympic dumbbell It's harder. It's hard to stabilize that freaking thing because it's longer on the sleeves And it's a bit awkward compared to your regular dumbbells like those are significantly easier Which is not an excuse. It just is what it is and I'm owning it and I like it, it feels great. You may also notice that I'm drifting the dumbbell slightly in front of my body. So I'm trying to protract a bit at the bottom, it feels much better on the back. And then when I pull up, I bring it at a diagonal angle. I find that this maximizes the mind muscle connection. And I don't try to keep the dumbbell completely neutral either. A bit more on the pronated side, but still neutral, like semi-neutral, you know? I find that is the optimal grip for me or at least when using the olympic dumbbell specifically so there you have it three sets of ten went bang 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 back and forth felt really good there you go back is looking fine and i always like rows honestly so i think it's a mistake to neglect them just to focus on pull-ups you want to include both and in this case i just decided to drop them but next workout i'll definitely go ham on them again anyway penley row three sets of 20 haven't done these in a while Again, this is a volume day. It's why I don't film a lot of these because they're really boring to watch if you ask me. That's my personal opinion. You might be like, Alex, I love these because you have to speak for longer and dive into more of your training methods. But for me, it's like, bro, you're watching a guy do 135 for three by 20. I guess the only thing that we can appreciate here is the work capacity that goes into this since it's far hard to lift explosively when you're fatigued state and also the back musculature. Check out those lats, guys. That's pull-up specialization. You know, I haven't done deadlifts in the longest time. I'm so f***ing tired. I don't even feel like doing a comment there. You know what? Let me just save it for the actual voiceover because right now I just can't f***ing talk. I feel like I'm a pass out. I'm pushing my limitations, man. Just showing you what's possible when you mix volume and intensity. It's much harder than isolating one variable, if you ask me. Gotta say, the vertical poles have kept me in check. And of course the high volume rolls on the side, but the main thing is the freaking pull-up training. I'm really, really happy with my back. Honestly, one of the few areas that I'm content with, but that's a problem sometimes. They say whatever stagnates dies. And in my case, gotta get that four plate pull-up, but not for today. Just wanted to get a volume session, pump it up, 
and it also assists your shoulder recovery, in my opinion, since we're going ham on the bench. Let's finish the rows, God damn it. That was not easy, let me tell you. Overall, the pen lay rows went well, and I'm super happy that I did them. So moving forward, probably gonna introduce more of them, either as a first exercise for pre-exhaust, or after the pull-ups, just stick into the higher volume setup. I don't see myself going stupid heavy with this approach. What would be badass is building up to a five sets of 20 with 225. That's like a lifetime goal right there, or something that could be achieved in a few years, provided that I'm using pretty good form, because I could already do somewhat of that, but it's gonna look all sloppy and that's not what I wanna do. Anyway, these are the band rows. I'm not gonna film all the sets, but I don't think two is enough in terms of matching the pushing volume. So this is the next best thing. No cables or machines required and low stress on lower back. And then we finalized the workout with some easy bar curls with the fat grip. Great on the elbows and the larger surface area gets you squeezing your biceps pretty hard as well. I don't know what it is about fat bar work. You would think that your forearms get super taxed when curling, but for some reason the biceps get pumped to the max. So it actually makes me curious as to how a regular axle bar curl would feel like. So maybe I'm gonna get one of those. So I'm debating between the stubby and the long. And yeah, chain hammer curl, neutral grip, very important for the brachialis and also injury prevention for the bench press. And the chains deload your elbows at the bottom and you get peak tension at the top. Excellent squeezing lift, and I alternate between the standard hammer grip and kind of like a pinwheel curl where I'm bringing the arms more inwards. This way I maximize the contraction on every possible level. Highly recommend it, and with that said, the commentary is done. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you give this workout a shot because it really is challenging, and I guarantee that if you can complete it, serious gains will be made. So try it out, and expect more training videos on the way.